So today we're gonna to be making Sunday sauce. We're gonna be doing it keto friendly. So I know this sounds like difficult and most Italians do not wanna give up their Sunday sauce and I definitely did not wanna give up my Sunday sauce, especially with a nice son in my house who needs to eat all the time and you probably will hear him. He'll probably come running down at some point in time, you know, to torture me. So this is how I make my sauce and I'm gonna to try to simplify it as best I can. I use some avocado oil at the bottom, and then I use this garlic because the other garlic, when I smash it and mash it and everything else that I do with it, it gets all over the freaking place. I don't know, I'm doing something wrong with real garlic. So I use these, and I put in, you're probably gonna be mortified at how many. Um, I put in eight. Eight cloves of this garlic. Then I put the little cover back on because I don't want it to get freezer burnt. And I put it back away. And put that away. And then I put in, we like it spicy in my house. That might be because I'm half Cuban, so I have incorporated the spice factor into my. Sunday gravy. So, as you notice, I'm gonna go with sauce and gravy this entire video so that nobody can have any controversial comments to make by calling it sauce or gravy. I'm gonna go with both, and I don't know what you call it in your house. I know what I call it in my house, and I'm not telling. So that's the red pepper. I add a little bit more of dried garlic powder and I start to fry all of that up. Just let it get not terribly um, burnt, but aromatic, which it's doing right now. As you can see, it just burnt my eyes. I am <coughs> Napolitan, so we, well my family, I don't know if it's really a Napolitan thing, but my family does not put onions in our Sunday gravy sauce. We, just do garlic and basil, parsley, red pepper, all that. So I start that part. That's going great. Then I put in, I'm going with a lot because my son's going back to college tomorrow and he wants to take some back because, you know, college cooking is kind of caca. So I use Tutorosa crushed tomatoes with basil in it. You can use whatever you want. There's a million brands out there. So whatever one makes you happy, you should use. I also put a million holes in the top because I'm um, very impatient and I want the sauce to come pouring out as quickly as it can. I even shake it and do all kinds of nonsense to it so that it comes out as fast as possible. Oh, shit. Um, keep in mind, this is my second video, so there might be some cursing. There might be terrible editing and whatever else comes along with someone's first video. I have music playing in the background. This Long Island Italian Cuban girl loves her country music, and that is what's playing in the background. And, all right, so we're up to can number five. Like I said, I'm making a lot. So it's gonna be six cans of uh, crushed tomatoes. I don't use the low sodium one because and how often do you eat Sunday gravy sauce? Not that often. Go for it. Throw your salt in there. And also for us keto people, we kind of need the salt because we get a little bit of cramping. So the salt is probably a good idea. Now, this is the part that my mother is going to cringe at if she watches this video. I put in tomato paste because I'm going to be putting in so much meat. I don't know. I just think it gives it a richer, better, yummier flavor. I know she's probably having a stroke right now watching this. She's probably like, ah, whatever, I'm putting it in anyway. It's not too much, just one little tiny can of it. So that's gonna go in here. And, oh, there he is. I, I said he was gonna come down this guy. Um, all right, so that's the tomato paste going in. Almost set here with that. And then I'm going to add some salt and pepper. 
and we like a lot. This is a house that likes flavorful food. None of this two-turn crap that tastes like crap. We like to taste our food so to have flavor. So that's how that works here. Now I'm gonna stir it all up. Turn that flame back on. And looks so good already. As it's cooking and getting more flavorful, I will continue to taste it and add different ingredients. I might add some more basil, fresh parsley, a little more salt and pepper, potentially some more red pepper as we keep going. So while this is simmering, I'm gonna start my meatballs. All right, meat time. So I start with two pounds of ground sirloin because if my daughter ever found out that there was, you know, a little piggy in her food, she would sooner have a stroke. Um, we're not allowed to use any pork because she is not a fan. She'll eat almost anything else that has meat, but not a pig. <laughs> okay, with that, I put in the two pounds of meat. Then I put in about two cups of water, just to make sure that it stays really nice. And I'll be adding the water in and out depending how it's coming, um, the consistency. Because sometimes, I don't know, sometimes when I don't get um, enough fat in the meat, it, it's so liquidy I can't even make the balls out of it. I put four cage-free eggs into, like I said, two pounds of the chopped meat. So I put in four eggs, so basically two eggs to a pound, okay? Then we must use lots and lots of locatelli cheese, so I don't even measure it because I like a lot of it. Um, let me just kind of throw it on. There's a lot in there. Um, then, again with the salt, a nice generous can of salt, and a generous portion of pepper, lots of pepper. Then because I'm not using the traditional Italian seasoned breadcrumbs, I put in an Italian seasoning blend that I made myself. I only use glass jars, I don't like anything plastic, so I will use the glass. Uh, always and I make my own blends. I dry the herbs and then I put them all in. This one is parsley, oregano, and basil. And again, I put in a really generous amount because the almond flour is kind of yuck, but you need it to bind and help with the um, brush. I think it's almost empty. This one, so we're just gonna throw it on there anyway. Okay, then Italian must have garlic powder, again, glass jar, and it's dried garlic that I get in um, Whole Foods, and then I just transfer it into the glass containers. So, to me, they're just the best to work with. Now, here is the almond flour. In traditional, my traditional recipe, we use two cups of breadcrumbs, but I don't know. It doesn't seem to ever work. So there's one cup there. Now I'm a little kind of skeeved touching everything. So glove time. Put the gloves on. And I'm gonna mix it all together. And you definitely wanna make sure that all that cheese gets broken up because the last thing you want is to have a nice clump when you're eating your meatball. It's like, oh, look at that nice gross piece of cheese in my meatball. Okay, so now it's all kind of mixing together. I can't tell the consistency yet. But again, you want them like a little looser, enough where you can make like a really good ball out of it, but that the ball's gonna stick when you fry them. Yep, that's what I said, fry them. And you can fry them still because we are keto. So let's fry, fry away and get in all that nice, healthy, delicious fat um, so our bodies function and run properly on the fuel that we give it and burn up everything. We have enough 
energy to sustain our day, our workouts, whatever else you do throughout your day. And let's see how we're doing here. I'm gonna show you in a sec how these meatballs are definitely looking good, actually. Um, chunky, sorry, just have to get those chunks of cheese, because they definitely, you really don't want that chunk of cheese in your meatball. It's like just, doesn't taste so great. So normally what I would do is I would take a nice healthy amount of meatball. And this is how I test it. So I take it and I, <laughs> I try to play around with it just to make sure that it has like that, do you see it has like that jiggle kind of a consistency? And then I put it into another bowl and I make nice sized balls because who wants a crappy little, little shitty duty ball? And I just take, I don't even know how many, some people use a um, an ice cream scoop, you know, and if you want to do that, that's great. I personally don't do that because I like my meatballs round. I don't like them to have that, you know, that flat bottom. I don't know, that doesn't seem very meatball-y, doesn't seem very homey, doesn't seem very traditional to me. So I go with this. So I am going to continue rolling out these meatballs and I'll be back. Okay, so now we're going to do fry up the meat. So I have like a good amount of avocado oil because it has a high um, smoke point. So I like to fry it best in that. For some reason when I use olive oil, I do not get a good, um, I don't know, I don't, nice and hot. And my meatballs are mushing a tiny touch, which is not good. So, wait, I know I'm out of the frame, but I'm putting my gloves back on because we're going back to touching meat and I'm not touching the meat. Um, so this way I can just roll them back up. So the two pounds of ground meat actually gave me 20 meatballs. So I guess I get about 10, but nice size. They're like a good size meatball. So, you know, each person gets two healthy, two to three, well, if you're my son, you get, you know, six to eight meatballs. <laughs> because he eats a lot. Um, that's, that's James for you. James could take down a healthy amount of meatballs by himself. And like I said, some of these are kind of falling apart, which is good because they're going to be moist. You're going to have a nice consistency texture of meatball. We like them really fried up nice and crisp on the outside so that you can, um, what's it called? They don't fall apart in the sauce that way. I'm kind of hoping I can get all 20 in here. In one fell swoop would really be fantastic. So let's make a little room there. I have on the side here another bowl with a paper towel just to absorb all the extra oil once I take them out of here and put them, you know, in the pot. Oh my gosh, this new bowl went really cut hot. Yeah, that's in that's Italian word. You can look it up in the dictionary. Caca. Nice caca meatball. What I need there? <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh my god, can not tell this to me? I think I'm going to be like two meatballs short. Screw that. More maneuvering. They have to fit. I'm sorry. I'm not playing this game today. We have to get in here. Screw that shit. Yep, maybe we should change my name to the cursing keto loopy because that's more of what I do. <laughs> All right, come on, come on, a little more room Yeah. Okay, that meatball is in there. Now what I also have that I put in mine is we put in some skirt steak. So I have a good amount of skirt steak with the fat still on it to give the sauce gravy extra flavor. I have four sausages here. I have two hot and two regular. The hot ones, I put a toothpick in so that whoever grabs that knows that they grabbed a hot one. I also take the toothpick, which I've already done, and I kind of poke through the casing. This way, when I fry them, they don't come popping up all in my face and hurt me. 
I also have four pieces of filet mignon that I put in there too, and the gravy sauce to give it some extra flavor and some yum. Um, what else do I do? Sometimes, like I said, I put in the brajol, which is pork, and it's wrapped with cheeses and Italian spices. The problem is very hard for me to find ones that do not have breadcrumb in them. Um, I did not, I couldn't find them this time, and I'm not that Italian that I know how to make my own brajol, and honestly, I don't want to make my own brajol, so not going to happen. Um, also, sometimes I take the meat and I do fry it up by itself, making more like a little bolognese. This way it's in there a little well chopped up and I feel like it gets a better flavor throughout the, the sauce. Oh, these are crisping up so good. Wait till you see them. Um, and my favorite is I love to enjoy a meatball before it even hits the sauce. Like when it comes out of the frying pan and it's crispy and it's hot and the cheese is still a little bit ooey gooey, melty, delicious. I just love that. Um, I love that about it. So I do keep them, and I do keep them out for a while because if you put your meatballs in the sauce too early, then they fall apart all over the place and then you're really winding up with the bolognese. So that's not a, that's not fun when you're trying to make your, your gravy sauce. Uh, let's see, how are these doing here? They're doing good. Like I said, I've definitely used a good amount of oil. I'm gonna show you. So this was brand new when I started. So I used almost half of the container to fry up the meatballs. They're basically being deep fried and I keep it on the side just in case the meatballs absorb so much that when I flip them over, there's still enough for them to be um, fried in there. I have done them in the air fryer and honestly, they come out delicious. They really do. They come out just as good, but you know, when the boy comes home from school and asks for meatballs and he wants the house to smell Italian and yummy, you just do what you do, you know? That's how it works here. You know, my son, my son. So <laughs> we're gonna do that for him. I'm gonna let these cook up a little crisper and then we will, I will show them to you and we will do the rest of the meats. Okay, I'm back. I just wanna show you how dark I let my meatballs get so they get pretty like a pretty good crust on them all of them are like that so that they don't fall apart in the sauce so that will go over here in the corner until we're ready like maybe a half hour before I decide to before we eat so here are the fillets they are nice and browned the skirt steak is also nice and browned. And the sausage is also nice brown with my little toothpick sticking out. That's obviously a hot one. So my splatter guard, which you can see did not work even in the slightest when I was doing the meatballs because I'm kind of covered in it. Um, all right, I put all the meat in. Oh my God, I'm making such a fucking mess. All right, all of this goes into the pot. And I have my oil cooling over there because you should definitely not throw oil down the sink, especially hot oil. I have um, another, like I save my old oil containers and then once it's cooled off, I put it in there and put the top on and throw it in the garbage. So I'll do that, 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 all good. Anyway, okay, then soak it all down in there, cover it all up, keeping it on simmer. Now it is, what time is it? Oh, it's 105 New York time. And I'm gonna let this cook probably another like four, four and a half hours. I'm just gonna get all of that stuff blend together all the seasonings, all the meats, everything join and marry and be delicious. And I will show you later when I'll come back and show you what happens when I add the meatballs and boil the sauce. And of course my family's wonderful reaction, hopefully. 
because like I said, the meatballs are keto and my son and husband do not follow a ketogenic lifestyle. So we will see what they think. I'm not telling them. Shh. All right, welcome back. It is now quarter to six and the meal is complete. So I wanted to let you know I used the Capello's fettuccine pasta for the keto people in the house. The non-keto people have 